Hey, AD, welcome to our New York City apartment. Well, you're walking into the gallery here, so there's lots of things from different spots, whether it's a sculpture that we found in France at the flea market, a piece that we found in Scandinavia, found this over in Stockholm, and then photos, photos, photos everywhere. So welcome and join me. Come on into the kitchen. I mean, the most we ever cook in here, quite honestly, is probably a toasted bagel, maybe some iced tea and a coffee. It's the old joke. What's my favorite thing to make for dinner? It's reservations. I mean, the kitchen seems to be the spot where we have our black bowls. This lacquered black bowl we bought in Vietnam. And then this is sort of classic Elsa Peretti black bowl. I love all the black bowls because you can fill it with fruit. It looks amazing if you pop lemons into it, anything that has the color. But the bowl obsession is in every room. This room is the hangout room for my husband and I. I think a lot of it is the light. We've got so many great exposures in here. And this room is all about warmer bowls. You know, the bowls are actually turned into sort of different kind of themes or moods. We're kind of bowl and box and bag obsessed. What can I say? And then over here is where we sort of hang out in the morning sometimes if we have to do a little paperwork, have a cup of coffee and have a great New York City view. Well, of course, what's the best luxury in New York? It's outdoor space. I fancy myself a little bit of, uh, I don't know, a green thumb, but I've got a lot of help, I've got to be honest. But how great that we have strawberries growing right here in New York City. And then we've got all of our herbs, which quite frankly, we don't use in the city. A little mint we use for iced tea. But come on out to the terrace. It's an amazing spot. just to have greenery and flowers everywhere. It's wonderful to be able to go outside in New York and clip a few flowers. It's like having the country in the city, nothing better. To me, there's always something about summer dinner parties. It's lobster rolls, it's coleslaw, it's tomato and mozzarella, and it's a lot of rosé, and this is a perfect spot for that. As idyllic as this terrace is, the one thing you deal with in New York is the fact that there's always gonna be construction noise, right? So it's the price we pay. You come in from the terrace into this great dining area. This was found in New Mexico. And why not think outside the norm when you think about what you put on the centerpiece of a dining table? I'm not really that superstitious, but a little good energy from a giant crystal never hurt anyone. This is a Sarah. It's 1981, it's the year I started my business. And then over here, we continue with all the collecting of bowls and baskets. This is from the Philippines, it's in soapstone. This is handmade by an artist in England. The other thing that I love about this space, it's spare, but it's warm. You know, and I, I think a lot of that comes from texture whether it's, you know, the Conover pottery, the faux fur pillows, and then this table has these burnt edges, which I love. A little Annie Leibovitz on the table, and you need a little Annie in your life. I like having her work around me. This over here is kind of crazy. Nature and then craftsmanship together. Here's the stick, and here's the porcelain replication of the stick, and they perfectly complement these Nakashima nesting tables. This piece that we're hanging over the fireplace here is actually a slice of a tree. And what's better over a fireplace than wood? <laughs> you know, this is not a wood-burning fireplace, so there's no basket of logs. It's kind of my answer to the log basket. So now this is where we hang out and watch TV. In addition to the bowls, baskets, and boxes, the other obsession with the bee is books. And I love pulling them out and looking at great photographs and looking at old things. When you have guests come over, why not have the powder room be a little fun? So this guest powder room is sort of the homage to the 70s. Pictures of everyone at Studio 54. And then we have these wonderful notes from Jackie Kennedy where she's talking about her wardrobe. I mean, this is New York Central, this powder room. I've been collecting photography for over 30 years now. And I like being able to see the collection kind of rotate and change 
and put up some of our favorite things at any given time, whether it's Bowie at the Carlisle, it's Madonna wearing Michael Kors. This one's one of my favorites. This is a Burt Stern. It's Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. And when I met Elizabeth Taylor, I brought the photograph to show it to her, and she didn't remember it, which was unbelievable to me. And then she wrote to me here, to Michael, you are a very special man. I love you, Elizabeth Taylor. I was knocked out. I mean, it's Elizabeth Taylor. And then we continue with a lot of other photographs. This one of Ringo is sort of, I think for every ex-smoker, this is the picture. I mean, Ringo's having a good time smoking his cigarette here. And then we continue up and we start to sort of look at all of the things that have more color to them. You know, whether it's things that really are more abstract here in color, and then some really classic fashion moments. And then I love this photograph, this one. I mean, yellow lipstick, it's so 60s. And then of course, I guess the smoking obsession continues at the end of the haul. The most beautiful approach to looking at something that's so awful is what Irving Penn did with cigarette butts. Well, of course, we don't have just a few books. We have a lot of books, especially biographies. I'm obsessed. And then some of my favorite pictures. I can't, I'm not going to show you all the personals, but you know what? There was a time when Michael Kors looked like Peter Frampton. I mean, this is my rock and roll Peter Frampton moment. And then this portrait here, I was surprised by my husband had it commissioned. It's Michael Volbrocht. He's one of my favorite artists and illustrators. And I, every time I walk by it, I just, I remember opening it up and seeing it the first time. Whenever I think about classic fashion photography, like in the pantheon of all times, you know, the Avedon portrait of Nastasia Kinski being kissed by the snake. We were vintage shopping in Miami and in a crowded jewelry case, I literally flipped out and I saw the bracelet that Nastasia Kinski is wearing in the photograph. The image, the reality, there are no snakes in the apartment, that's for sure, but the bracelet was just like calling my name. It was incredible. And this sort of corner here, there's real emotional resonance for me, whether it's Joan here or this sculpture actually was done by an artist who was a good friend of mine. He was my college roommate, and he did that when he was 19. He unfortunately passed away from AIDS when he was 30. And so whenever I walk by, I think of the talent that lived a long time and a long life, and then great talent that had this short life. I like things in the house to sort of remind me of, of people and places and things. I mean, that's the greatest thing you can have in your house. Well, now we're gonna come into the master bedroom area. And I love that you have the ability to hang out in this chaise, open a book, and you get to see the view. And then again, more vessels. I mean, I can't stop myself. I mean, this one we bought in Kyoto. Uh, this we bought in Paris. Bowls, bowls, bowls. All right, well, now we're gonna enter the closet. And I always think people wanna see what does a fashion designer's closet look like? And my husband and I have two very different color palettes. So you hit this end of the closet, and boy, it is about the stack of black. I mean, I think you need a black tailor jacket in every fabric, from linen to cashmere to wool. And then I wear my sunglasses all the time. You know, everyone's like, how many pairs of sunglasses do you own? This is only aviator sunglasses. That's one drawer full, second drawer full. Everyone always says to me, how could you have so many of the same glasses? Well, there's a slight difference in all of them. One's slightly dark green, one's black, one's charcoal. I know the difference, makes me happy. And then when we come back here, my husband loves lots of blue. So he's the explosion of blue shirts, no black in his closet. And again, I can't, I can't help myself with the storage situation. This trunk was my sort of farewell gift after seven years at Celine. This is a vintage Louis Vuitton with no LVs on it. It's so old, it's before they actually had the monogram. What's the best thing in the world to be able to actually take a bath and see a boat go by? I mean, paradise to me. And privacy and light in a bathroom in New York is everything. This gym is definitely sort of the gym for the lazy. 
because you can roll out of bed and jump on the bike. I will never look like the guys in these fabulous Herbert's photographs. But you know what? I've got the view here. I've got the view there. Get on the bike. No excuses. Thanks, guys, for stopping by. Next time, we'll let you meet our cats. They don't get up this early. I mean, what can I tell you? They like to sleep late.